everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are doing some repotting because I have a couple of things to repot that you saw in my most recent plant tours video. I did a little last haul and we're also gonna be answering some questions from Instagram. I asked you guys if you had any questions and I got a few, or more than a few really. <laughs> we're just gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. What plant supplies have been the most life-saving to you? I've been thinking about this a lot, like what plant supplies really make the difference for me. And I would say number one, my plant a potty Hold on, before I get too far into this, these are plants that I got from a pop-up, an Aquagenera pop-up, and they have not been acclimated to the US at this point. There is a smell coming up from this plant in this moss. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna check first like all three of these plants that I'm repotting right now to make sure that there is root growth. And there is, thankfully, look at that. There is root growth, okay. So I am going to pack like a tiny bit maybe around this and then plant that up uh, because I do like that amount of root growth. I think that's pretty good for being potted up. Where is my soil? I think I have to go get a new bag of soil because I don't see it. Why did I not have that prepared in advance? It's so much harder to get up now. Oh. oh. And the plant that I'm potting up is the Plamanii, the, the Philodendron Plamanii Postazanum. It's very beautiful. The leaves are starting to be revived a bit, I think because that root system is finally coming in, but it was looking a little sad for a bit there. Probably also just due to the fact that I kind of not forgot about them. I It didn't click in my brain that they wouldn't be like, well-rooted and established possibly. So I was kind of treating them as if they already were, but I figured out pretty quickly that that is not the case. And so I started being a lot better of a plant mom. Okay, so back to life-changing plant products. I said the plant -a potty this soil scoop is definitely up there, like very, very high. I got it from RT1 Home. If you want like this exact one, I can link them. But this plant is a creeper. So it needs to be in a more shallow pot. And I have a shallow pot here, but it needs it to be a little bit longer. But I'm going to leave it in this pot while that root system establishes more, just because I, I don't know, I have a pot that I could put it in for sure, like a long pot. But I just want to see it get a little bit more established and maybe put out like one leaf in my care and then I'll feel more comfortable putting it in a more permanent living situation. Obviously you guys know the De La Tanks houseplant soil is the soil that I made with Tanks Green stuff. It is an incredible product. I know that it's a product that I made, but well, I made with them. I didn't, I cannot even take full credit for it, but it is truly life-saving. Like if I didn't have this pre-mixed houseplant soil right now, I would be scrambling around my house looking for ingredients to mix my houseplant soil like I used to do. And you know, you'd run out of things at all different times. You wouldn't be able to get, you know, super high quality ingredients. And because the De La Tanks is made in like a, a nice soil facility, they have access to really good materials. And I just love this soil so much. All of my plants are potted in it and it's just perfect for all of my plants. I love it. Would you be up for doing a second book? Maybe houseplants for intermediate. Yeah, I have thought a ton about a second book and I've actually outlined it. <laughs> um, that doesn't necessarily mean that anything is in the works. I would have to, you know, connect with a publisher and figure out all of that kind of stuff, which is a whole thing. Like that's like a really long process but I, I do have an outline and like ideas for what I would want the book to be about. I didn't end up putting this in there. Oops, I think it'll be fine without it. I did put it on my goals list for 2023, 2024 to start the process of that. And so I think I'm going to 
maybe dive a little bit deeper in that towards the end of the year um, after the baby is here because I this summer and fall is all consumed with babies <laughs> because I'm having a baby. And there's been several people who have commented and been like, what, you're pregnant? I missed that. So yeah, I'm 33 weeks pregnant right now. My baby is due like early mid July. So things are ramping up over here. Like I'm getting really excited, but also very anxious. Like there's been some people asking a lot of questions about that. Ooh, this one is very well rooted. I'm gonna leave a lot of this moss, probably about that much, just around the base here. And I'm potting it into this pot right here. It has a lip on it, so it could technically like go on the wall, but I don't really, I don't know if I want this plant on the wall, but I definitely could. It would be like the only rare, quote unquote, rare plant on the wall. It's a philodendron patriciae, and it's a very cool plant. I'm super excited that I have it. I really like my plant wall being filled with more basic things. Oh, sorry for the grunting. <laughs> uh, now that makes more sense now that you know that I'm pregnant if you didn't already, but yeah. I just kind of like the idea of that being more, I don't know, just vines and things that are much less stressful to take care of. But I did order a shelf because I moved the big mama monstera outside and she is not coming back into the plant room. She's gonna move out to the greenhouse if she survives the summer, which I'm sure she will, but she's gonna move out to the greenhouse after summer's over. And therefore I'm gonna have an entire corner of my plant room empty. So I ordered, from Etsy a, not cane, it's like a, ban not, not even bamboo, what is that called? Anyway, it's like an arched shelf that can fit in a corner. It's really pretty and it's being like handmade, I guess. I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. And that is gonna go in that corner now and I'm planning on putting this plant and then a few of the plants that are on the bottom part of my shelf here because this, this bottom bench is so full of plants. Like it's a little overwhelming and it just needs a little bit of a declutter. And of course a lot of stuff is also gonna move out to the greenhouse, but I don't know what yet. So I'm kind of just spacing things out a little bit better. Favorite things the dogs are doing lately and do you notice, do they notice that you're pregnant? I've answered this I think in like almost every Q&A recently because people love my dogs. But no, I don't think that they know that I'm pregnant. I think that they can tell that something is different and like on days when I don't feel well, they're definitely more inclined to hang out with me. Whereas before they were much more like, hello, why are we sleeping? Especially Cooper. Uh, but other than that, I haven't really noticed like a ton of changes in their behavior. Like they're not acting any type of way. But the other day Leo did lay his head on my belly and it was very cute. And I think it was just because he realized that it was comfortable and not necessarily because he's like, thinking there's something in there, you know? Are you taking maternity leave and how long? Okay, so this is a question. My husband actually asked me, he's like, have you told your, your online friends that you're gonna be taking maternity leave? And I was like, no, I haven't. So I guess we should talk about that. <laughs> Naturally, with having a baby, you hope to get at least a little bit of a maternity leave. And my maternity leave looks a little different because I am self-employed, like my job is YouTube. So I can take as little or as long as I want. Um, either way, it's not like paid. Like I don't have a guaranteed paycheck during that time. Like I won't be taking brand deals because I'm gonna be taking care of a baby. So I'm not, if it if I did have a brand deal, it would be because it was like pre-filmed like in the next couple of weeks. But generally I am planning on having one, but I just don't know at this point how long it's going to be. I am planning on pre-filming a bunch of videos so that I can still have an income off of like YouTube ads. But it sucks that I have to think, like it just sucks that we in general, like you're about to have a baby, your life is about to change forever and you're like, oh, what about money? Like, anyway, <laughs> we're super lucky to be in the situation that I'm in though because I can kind of choose how I want it to look. But I'm thinking that I'm gonna take at least six weeks, like at bare minimum six weeks of not filming and um, spend that time with my baby and obviously have pre-filmed videos. So my videos will go down to once a week during that time because I don't think that I could film pre-film more than that and have that like 
makes sense. I don't know. I'm going to pre-film as much as I can to give myself as much time as possible, not having to think about work. I would love to do like a full 12 weeks, but I don't think that that is something that would be possible for me. We will just have to see. <laughs> okay. This is an Anthurium longus. Okay. This is the one where I was like, what is this called? And it has these like really pretty lance shaped leaves and it does look like it's okay no does not look like it's trying to put out a new leaf anyway the roots look really good though which i'm very very pleased about and i'm going to be potting it into this uh glazed pot so the inside of this is glazed which is really important for me with anthurium lately like i really just want to make sure that they are in a glazed situation because that just makes it so much easier for them with water retention and i'm gonna keep this moss around the base here as well um, and then just backfill with De La Tanks. And if you want to support my channel during my maternity leave, no obligation or whatever, but you know, watching those pre-filmed videos, hopefully they're not gonna feel pre-filmed, but yeah, watching those videos, muting during the ads, but letting them play really helps um, increase the amount of money that I can make off of YouTube ads and stuff like that. I feel like this needs to be buried like a lot deeper. Like this plant needs a much longer pot. I need to look at some photos of what this plant looks like, like if it is one that is super upright, which I think it is. Maybe if I just put a stake in it and just like hold it up, that will be helpful because I don't wanna to bury too much of this. Let me see if I have a stake that I can put in there. What is your favorite plant family? Okay, recently I would have to say that Anthurium have really stolen my heart like big time. I'm a big Anthurium gal, <laughs> like big Anthurium gal. And I think it really has to do with the fact that I like finally have success with them after years and years and years of trial and error. I have just absolutely sucked at Anthurium. <laughs> and if you've been a follower on my channel, you know that. And like, I've never been like, oh, I got Anthurium. Like I know how to take care of them. I like Anthurium a lot, or like, let's say I liked Anthurium a lot but I was very confused about their care and I just never felt like I was doing enough for them, which was true because when I made some changes, things really, really bounced, bounced like in the positive for me. So I would say now that I figured them out, Anthurium are 100% my favorite genus. They're beautiful, ethereal plants. I just love everything about them. I love that they can come in like waxy varieties like this. I love that they can come in velvety varieties. I love that you can cross pollinate them and make seeds. Everything about them is just super exciting. Okay, what are your favorite common and affordable plants? Less than $20 for a six inch pot. I, hmm, six inch pot is pretty big. I would say most six inch pots are gonna be like 15 to $30 to be honest, I guess, depending on where you are. My favorite common plants that could be in the $20 price range, Chinese evergreen. So Aglionema, I love the silver bay. That's like definitely a go-to for me. It's such a beautiful plant. I love Hartley philodendron and there's so many different types and colors and I prefer them over pothos. Like I have actually thought about this a lot lately that I much prefer Hartley philodendron over pothos. Pothos for me, always die just to be honest i have one like a really crusty one up in my balcony here that is just not doing well well okay what it's not doing well it's been dead for like years and i have never taken it down it's kind of like a funny inside joke um that like it sits there as like a symbol to the rest of my plants it's like if you cross me this is gonna be your fate <laughs> Syndapsis pictus are amazing as well, super easy. Generally super easy. I have had my struggles with them, but I would say that they're pretty easy. Um, oh, Ripsalis. Ripsalis is a very cool, uh, I don't wanna say genus, but just like a category of plants. It might be a genus. It's just so cool. There's so many different kinds and they're very, very hardy. And actually speaking of Ripsalis, I did not plan this, but I bought this Ripsalis when Nicole was in town. And I, I said that these plants were like the last of my haul, but then I saw this and I was like, I, I need to grab that. I just, I have to. It's a Ripsalis paradoxa. And I am like literally not even concerned about this plant surviving during my <laughs> postpartum situation because they are so hardy. I've had one of these for a really long time and I love it. And I bought it off of eBay actually a couple years ago and it was like, I don't know, 
more expensive than it should have been because when I got it, I was like, this is tiny and I'm really upset that I spent that much on it. Anyway, <laughs> this one is a probably a five inch pot and it was $30. So not exactly in the budget, but in the budget that this person said, but you know, roughly around that. Okay, do you do plant swaps, but via shipping often? I used to do plant swaps, like virtual plant swaps a lot. When I first started my collection, I just thought it was like the best way. I mean, I still think it's like one of the best ways to get some plants that you really want. Um, I've sort of strayed away from doing them more often. Um, I've done it a few times where I've just like one-off situations, like not necessarily like a surprise swap because what I used to do is there would be, there would be like one specific plant that I knew someone was looking for. And so I'd send that one and then usually you send like a couple of other goodies. And I've done several unboxings on my channel of those swaps. I don't know how to get this out of here without wire cutters because though the Ripsalis is like pretty hardy, Okay, I guess that just cut it. I didn't want to dent these ones because these are like my nice shears. Anyway, ripsalis are pretty hardy, but it is one of those that like if you knock it, you could like lose a piece. So kind of have to be a little careful with it. Sometimes I'll do an exchange with one of my patrons if they message me and they're like, hey, I saw you were looking for this. Like, let me send it to you. And then I'll be like, okay, like what can I send you back? Stuff like that I do more often times now, exchange situation. But I think it's a really fun way to get more plants. Um, it's obviously free, you're paying for shipping, and also you're sending plants from your collection. I don't know, I just think it's a really great way to grow your collection in the beginning. Oh my gosh, I just broke this. Okay, did I? It was kind of already broken to begin with. Hold on, I'm just gonna cut this off and then I'm just gonna reroot it into the pot. Cause it had like, I don't know if you can see that. It looked like it had already tried or it had already got like knocked. It healed itself and then I just snapped it again. Oops. My advice for doing plant swaps online and like shipping plants is just to watch unboxing videos so that you know how other people ship their plants because it's really super disappointing when you do do an exchange and like everything has gone well and then <laughs> you get to the point where you actually open up the box and the plants are like in terrible condition because they didn't know how to ship them. Um, which like who is shipping plants all the time to like know how to do that like randomly. I think that as long as you're like watching videos or like even there's informational videos out there to learn how to do it as well. But if you can just observe how other people do it, I think that's a really great way to learn how to package plants. And then the more you do it, you'll find certain methods that really work for you. How are you really feeling at the moment? Tired. I'm really, really tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, I sleep not that much at night anymore because it's just really uncomfortable. And then throughout the day, I'm like fighting, not napping all day. And then of course, I think that is affecting my night sleep. But if I'm not sleeping at night, when am I, when am I supposed to sleep, you know? So there is that. Also, my body is just changing and it's like uncomfortable. Like I'm obviously, not obviously, some people aren't, but I'm fine with the changes that are happening. But it is just kind of difficult to like not be able to do things that I used to do. But anyway, I'm gonna do a full pregnancy, like third trimester Q&A on my vlog channel. Would you recommend a Hoya Linearis to a first Hoya plant mom? No, <laughs> definitely not. I am downgrading this plant because I actually really should just like propagate it. But I feel like every time I try to propagate these, it goes really bad. But maybe I just wanna do that because look, this is a, um, what is this plant? It's a Begonia Maculata and it looks terrible because it has this like entirely blank stem just because it has not been a good plant for the wall up there. But Begonia, if you leave this blank, they do tend to fill back in. So actually I think I'm just gonna leave it. Um, but yeah, they this plant has not enjoyed the neglect that the plant wall generally receives and it just looks terrible and I need this pot because I wanna put this Ripsalis in it and replace the plant like up at the very top of the wall. For the very top of the wall, it tends to be a little bit more neglected and so I just wanna put plants up there that are a little bit more hardy and not needing as much attention uh, because it is annoying to crawl all the way up there not crawl, climb all the way up there on the ladder. So they just tend to get a little bit more neglected. Back to the Linearis thing, I would not recommend Linearis to a, a first time Hoya mom. It's one of the harder Hoyas in my opinion. Like I don't think it's a good beginner plant. So what I would, what I would suggest though, 
is any of the Hoya Carnosa hybrids. Hoya Carnosa is so easy. You could get just like a regular Hoya Carnosa or you could get a hybrid. There's so many. There's the Compacta, there's the Crinkle 8, there's the Crimson Princess, Crimson Queen. I'm pretty sure those are all variations of the Carnosa and they're really pretty and they have really pretty and good smelling flowers too if you are lucky enough to get it to flower. It's an exciting plant and I'd say that it's very easy. Do you ever feel bad when you give someone plant advice and it doesn't work out for them? A hundred percent, I yes. <laughs> I would say though that I try to keep pressure off of myself because I don't give advice as if I am the end all be all of plant knowledge. Like I definitely keep it very open handed and very just open. Like I'm like, oh, this is what works for me. This is what I would do. Really avoiding the type of language that's like, oh, well, this is what you should do. And this is what always works because what works for me is not gonna work for everybody. And I have literally never claimed to be a botanist, a horticulturalist. I dropped out of master gardener school. <laughs> I know things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what I know is going to be absolute fact. So I've taken a lot of the pressure off myself to be right all the time, which is something that um, in my regular life, I like to be right but it's not like realistic because every plant situation is going to be different. You can't expect that, you know, one size fits all advice is gonna work. You can't expect plant advice to be one size fits all. I think that makes more sense. <laughs> well, that just fit perfectly. <laughs> so now those roots can go down and get some new soil. Um, maybe even a, bit, a little bit bigger of a pot would have been good, but I think that this will be just fine. Oh shoot, I wanted to plant this into it. Hold on. Okay, so this offshoot, just like, you know, as we saw, I cut it off on accident and I'm just gonna dig a little hole with my finger and literally just plop it in and it will root and it will be fine. Ripsalis are a lot like cactus in that way that like you don't have to do a lot to get them to root. They will just do it. Very nice. All right, I have to pop in really quickly to end off this video because I talked a lot and there was a lot of questions that I wanted to answer and a lot of plants that need to be repotted. So if you enjoyed this video, stick around because I'm gonna be posting a part two very soon, answering more of your questions and repotting even more plants. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like. You can leave a comment down below if you have any comments or questions, additional questions. I'll be happy to chat with you in the comments. And I do have a vlog channel. So if you like the chatty content, just hanging out with me, you can head over to my vlog channel for more of that. I just did a patio makeover. I just did a sew along. I just do a ton of fun stuff over there. So anyway, I'm excited to see you on the vlog channel if you haven't subscribed already, but otherwise I will see you in the next video. Bye.